Uh, and in this next segment, I believe Rich is appropriately dressed. I am. I am. I got the wrong vault on, but, you know, it's an old hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we are going to be talking uh, this week about the Fallout role-playing game from, uh, you know, Modifius. I don't know how to... Modifius? Yeah, oh, I, guess I, I, I was going to say, I don't know Modifius. how to pronounce it. Uh, hmm. uh, I, huh. We should have asked for a pronunciation guide. <laughs> but uh, anyway... Uh, so Fallout, uh, it, the role-playing game is a role-playing game that uh, was recently kickstarted uh, successfully. Um, there's folks in the chat who have uh, said they've, they, they, they were backers. And uh, this game uses the 2D20 system. Right. I've been very curious about the 2D20 system, but I've never, I've never played it. Um, mm -hmm. And then we read this book, and now it's like, oh, I understand now. I understand right. the appeal of the 2D20 <laughs> system. Yeah, so I, I wanted to talk about that. I mean, it's also part of Dune, um, which game that just came out. So I'm excited to to learn more about that. Um, and I also just want to talk about like the the Fallout flavor that we've got going here because this book is immersive. Like if you mm -hmm. <laughs> if you played Fallout for like New Vegas yesterday, uh, this book's gonna feel great. <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, it's got everything you want in there. Yeah, and I, I will say that's something because I've I've already started to work on the Dune book for a future review. Everybody, maybe next week we'll talk about Dune. Uh, <laughs> and and I will say they have they they do a really great job of of bringing the feeling of the property into the game. So you know, and we'll talk about that next week when we talk about Dune. Yeah. But this week, talking about this one, if you look at the, even the table of contents, that feels very much like something you would see in the uh, you know in the video game. Yeah, really true to it, and it's gonna be all the way through this this book as well. Um, mm -hmm. But but take a look at this real quick uh, if you're looking at the the table of contents. Um, I love this. Uh, uh -huh. The equipment section, chapter four, like chapter three, character creation, awesome. They've got what thirty pages. That seems like enough to make a character. Uh, yep. The, the equipment section is a hundred pages long. It's a hundred pages long. <laughs> that is that is a lot. Of, that's a lot. A lot of gear. You got to get them big guns. You got to get them <laughs> explosives. Like you just got to have it all. Um, yeah, and I love and that. That's, but that's it, one of the things for you expect with uh, with, with Fallout is 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 that right. kind of that kind of level of equipment because there's just so yes. so much equipment that's involved in the game itself. Right, and modifications and you know add-ons that you can. Oh, there's so much stuff. It's it's a dense system, but. Um, mm -hmm. You'll also see there's lots of, of core information about the world here. Uh, for many of you Fallout folks, uh, it will be familiar, you know, mm -hmm. um, seeing our vault tech, our corporations, Commonwealth, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it gets started here with the the welcome to the wasteland, right? Uh, pick a job that's special to you. I love this diagram down here because it's Fallout. It's right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's got your little yeah, vault I... boy. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, every everything like... <laughs> when you go through through this and like you're, you're building your characters and you're doing everything and we, we may get a little bit more uh in a second but but everything just feels so fallout so special it does mm -hmm. <laughs> right it's, it's a big core of the game and you're going to be excited about how often it shows up in this book <laughs> um yeah but but special is the deal right your seven stats we'll we'll get into those in a bit but uh, but like you said mm -hmm. the big deal is the the actual 2d20 system uh which i was very curious about and here we go um mm -hmm. it's a it's a wild variant of it's going to feel more at home if you are used to playing with percentile dice i think it's just using d20s instead um but uh, up at the top it's got the the summary which is uh you have attributes you have skills you add them together to create a high number uh maybe if you're really good at something that's like nine right um mm -hmm. and then you roll 2d20 and you try to get underneath that total yeah, so, and so yeah, the bet. GM or the storyteller is going to give you how 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 difficult it is, uh, and then sometimes you only have two d twenty, but you have to get three successes. Right. So the way to do that is through uh, uh, action points, <laughs> which yes. I, I I I like the action points, mm -hmm. um, because then it gives an exa a, a a a moment for for you to go, oh, I, well, I don't have enough action points. Let me borrow some from the GM. And then the GM gets yes. the action points, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is I'm pretty excited about. 
It's a very cool system. I also like that you generate action points by getting more successes than you need. So you are incentivized yes. to roll tons of dice as, as often as you can. Uh, so that's very cool. I really like how that works. Uh, it seems like a neat setup. Um, it's going to take D&D folks a little bit to, uh, to get to rolling low. Uh, actually, rolling mm -hmm. a 20 is bad in this game. It introduces complications for every 20 you roll. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Oh, and I like that too. Is is you can make things even more complicated. So instead of just rolling a twenty, and I don't know if you have that page picked out yet, uh, but instead of rolling a twenty, you could say, well, this is extra difficult. So if you roll a you know a nineteen or twenty, then you get the the bad effect as well. Uh, right. Absolutely. And I like that mechanic. <laughs> um, this is pretty wild. I, I was looking at this. Yeah. Uh, because you can roll way more d20s. I can say something is a difficulty five, and you have to get five successes, which uh, as a statistics teacher is, if you have a 50-50 chance, like it's such a good way to say, this is impossible, but I'll let you try it. Because if you're rolling 50-50 and you have to get five successes, that's a, what, a one in 32? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's just such a nice way to be like, sure, try it. Uh, whereas in D&D, we don't really have those options. Um, you know, if I say, sure, try it, uh, and you roll a 20, then you you do it, I guess. So let's move on. Yeah. Uh, this game can make it very difficult to be successful at things. Um, there's a page in here that's got like the difficulty examples. And a five is like convincing an enemy to stand down or shooting a target uh, at long range on a stormy night. So it's stuff that shouldn't be that possible, but you should have a chance. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Rich, your hair looks great. Oh, hey, good thanks. Haircut. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever compliments my haircut. I get a haircut every week, sometimes multiple <laughs> times a week. I've only gotten, th wait, one this year. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I forgot gotten... what year it was for a second. I was trying one to count this last August as this year. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and, and we're just kind of continuing through looking a little bit at the combat stuff. Um, the combat's interesting because I, I like, Oh wait, it, did, did you grab a picture of that page? Uh, okay. Maybe not. I mean, there, not there's, a... there's one, yeah, there's one thing I really like about the combat is, is that, uh, you can roll random to see which body part you affect. And oh, that's, that's right. Kind yes. Of, <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of just built into the into the entire the entire thing. Entire yeah. Thing. Uh, oh my gosh, and it's wild. You're not going to do a ton of damage in this game, right? That's that's not the deal. You have specific d6s, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and like one of the sides of it is like two damage. A couple or one, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, which is wild. And then there's the the face is one damage plus one damage effect trigger, which is fun. Right. So that would be things like. Mm -hmm uh you know uh hitting your uh reducing your dr on your on your armor or reducing the radiation uh that you're yes. able to radiation damage you're able to take yeah and there's there's stuff like you know you can spend your action points to add more damage more dice of damage as well so there's there's a lot of this that feels like not the vat system in fallout but like a cool RPG variation on it, right? So I have a lot of choices. Well, okay, I don't know what body part. I'm going to do more damage. I'm going to do, you know, this huge massive attack with five dice, uh, which is a lot of fun. Um, the random hit location is great. If you ever do five points of damage, you automatically add an injury effect um, to whichever <laughs> area you nice. hit. Um, and the table is wild. Like if you get hit in the the arms, I think you drop your weapon. You know, it's it's very Fallout style deadly. <laughs> <laughs> it it's is what you expect it is. from this game. Yeah, and so for a critical hit occurs when a character oh, suffers five or more damage on one hit, and then it yeah, and then a critical hit imposes an injury on the character, which confers a penalty depending on the location. So, yeah, there's some of these that are pretty pretty, pretty juicy, right? So oh, definitely a deadly game. <laughs> yeah, um, and here we go. Uh, by the way, uh, this is where we talk about special. Right. So this is your right. attribute. You know, it gives you a little go to and sure it's not a percentile system like uh you know, like you would expect by playing the game. This is a, a, a much more streamlined version of the game for RPG setting. So uh but yeah, no, it's so cool. And I, I, I really like, you know, when these are just straight out of Fallout. And I like the Lux stat. I like the Lux stat a lot. 
Right. So luck d- doesn't. So the way luck works, which which I, th- I think was genius, is that it doesn't <laughs> apply to. So what you do is you normally take an attribute and a skill and you add those together. Sometimes, uh, your GM, your storyteller, might say, "Oh, by the way, eh, this is more lucky than intelligence." So you're gonna have to roll your luck and your your skill to do that. Um, which is great because then you can also like spend little luck points and then roll whenever you want, decide you just want to be lucky instead of being intelligent. So, which I right. think is cool. Like, Oh, you know, that's an intelligence, uh, something check. Well, mm-hmm. you know, I think I'm going to, I'm going to rely on my luck. I'm going to spend yeah. a luck point and I'm going <laughs> to roll my luck. And I'm like, yes, that's what I want. Right. And I love that by being luckier, you get more points and abilities to do that. You know, it's just it, it works all well together. It's fantastic. Yeah, I, I got to so say good. that coming up with six stats based around the word special is one of the smartest RPG things I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll say it out loud. Um, yeah. But absolutely, when you start this game, they all start at five. You get a couple points to boost a couple. You can drop some to four to boost some more as well. Um, so your stats are not super high. Uh, your skills are also not going to be super high. Um, giving you uh, often, like, you know, in that 50-50 realm, and if you were bad at something, you were, you were bad at it. <laughs> yeah. If you have a low charisma and you don't have any skills in persuading people, you're going to fail that check. You know? Yep. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Um, yeah. After that, you get to pick one of your uh, one of the uh, major groups. I think there's there's six in the game, you know, and that's stuff like Brotherhood of Steel, uh, being a vault survivor, uh, a vault hunter, being a survivor just out in the wastelands. Um, here's the ghoul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're a necrotic post-human. Couldn't get yeah. into a vault so these... facility. You got warped. <laughs> yeah, and those are so good. Yeah, like and you could also be a uh, a Mr. Handy. A, a, that's right. <laughs> uh what was the other one a uh mutant yeah a oh super yes, mutant. A super mutant. yeah 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 uh, yeah i didn't so, want to so put good. them all I, in this i just put the cool yeah <laughs> yeah so no it's 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 really cool and then and then here this is another part of character creation that i really loved and they pulled this right out of the game these are your perks yes uh it, it, it has what they do as well as the requirements so it even feels like uh you know going through the perk tree mm-hmm. on yep. uh on the fallout video game mm-hmm and, multiple uh, ranks for yeah. some of these they do improve if you want to i think commando is the only one on this page or chem resistant that has a second rank so you can kind of decide mm-hmm. how much you want to specialize and where you want to go as long as you're meeting the requirements you're fine you know <laughs> mm-hmm. this feels very fallout it does um, it does <laughs> uh yes yeah, so the uh the Meyer larks these th- this is a example of what whenever you're looking at this book this is towards the back of course and uh it in and this is this is some of the the enemies some of the the denzians that you can approach you can find while you're out there uh and everybody knows and loves uh the mirelurks from the game but right. uh yeah no i i and, and i like how easy this the stat block is to read that's one thing that's very it interesting is. about a lot of games is 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 how easy is their stat block to read and that's one of the things i like to look for and in a 2D20 system, I didn't know what to expect, right? And this is, this is very easy to follow. Yeah. Look, uh, it's it's Pincer's attack is body plus melee. It looks like they've got a four body and a melee one. Add them up, you get a five, right? I'm rolling. Yep. I'm trying to get a five or less. Uh, and if I hit mm-hmm. three dice of damage. Um, you can see they've got initiative. They've got defenses, uh, physical damage resistance, energy damage resistance. Some creatures can lower these things. Creatures only got five hit points, you know? Like we were saying, five points is a critical hit. Like, uh, actually, it's yeah. going to take a Meyer Lurk down. So <laughs> yeah, this is this is a low-level enemy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, But then on the other hand, I don't know if level seven is a, a high-level enemy, but... It goes up uh, to 10, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> this, this, this one seems seems pretty intense. Uh, you know, this is your, your everybody's favorite rad scorpion. You know, I just run from rad scorpions typically in the game. Oh, totally, totally. And I think that's that's what they're what they're talking about here as well is oh yeah you probably just want to run from these guys uh mm-hmm. where where the the uh, Meyer lurk has a uh super mutants are in the book by the way you uh, can both play them and there's a lot of monsters <laughs> there's many yeah, variations yeah there are uh, um but yeah so so you know the the, the Meyer lurk had uh five hit points this has 21 hit points so yeah. that's it's gonna it's gonna take you a little bit uh a little bit of yeah and a little bit more time DR to do with this. Four? Four. 
Mm-hmm. So I, there was a mention of like some of the huge explosions, the big guns you can have in this game. You're going to need that stuff to take care of some of these bigger creatures. Um, your small yeah. arms, uh, unless you've got huge bonuses to damage, are not going to cut it. Um, no. And we, we also have to point out that these monsters, uh, under inventory, it says butchery, right? If you're a scavenger, it tells you exactly what you can get by butchering up the rad scorpion for food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, with a successful uh, endurance survival check with a difficulty of one, uh, this yields two portions of rad scorpion meat. Uh, if an effect strong. is rolled, that also yields one rare material or a rad scorpion egg uh, if two effects are rolled. And then, yeah, let's just take a quick look. Now we'll look at butchery real quick for the uh, Meyer alert. The scavengers can butcher a dead one. Uh, difficulty zero. All right, this yields one portion of Meyer meat. <laughs> yeah. So essentially, like you just roll, and every success gives you something. Right, would there's be my a, assumption. Yes, there's there's a lot of rules in here for survival. Right, there's uh all the food that you need, all the the uh, the water that you have to find. Like if you get rads, how you're going to lower them, stuff like that. Like it's they have gone into making this game an intense survival experience. Yeah. Oh man. Now it's like. Yeah. Now, I'm, now, now it's like I kind of, you know, wait, we, we, we just took little clips from the book, but now I'm like, oh man, Great. now, now I, now I really want to dive into it more, um, <laughs> and I'm excited about this. I'm excited about talking about Dune next week. Um, mm-hmm. I'm also, you know, what else I'm also excited about? The changes that are happening to the Saving Throw Show channel. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to bring this up very briefly. Uh, so. Make sure to support the Patreon. Uh, that way, you guys get the 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 founders pin. Uh, this is only good until April thirtieth. So uh, you you want you want to get that initial backer pin. Uh, uh, hop on there, join the Patreon, and uh, yeah, become be, become part of the society. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let the chef send you on adventures. <laughs> yeah, uh, our, the uh, the, ex- the the chef of the exploration society likes to send our exploration society members on adventures for ingredients. Um, 